Good afternoon, everyone. We'll get started in just a minute. If you do have any questions as we go throughout, the chat um, is going to be through the Q&A, so please feel, feel free to ask questions there. Um, we'll answer some questions live, and then the moderating staff will answer questions as we're talking as well, so you kind of get a dualism there. Um, we'll get going in just a minute here. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Financing Your Education. So before we get going, we do sort of want to call out the transparency and the way this presentation is going to work. Um, at NAU, like I just mentioned, we value transparency highly, especially when it comes to finances. So today's presentation might be different than some other financial presentations you've seen in that we're really just going to tackle the elephant head on the room and discuss the process of financing your education, not only now, but probably hint at a few things for the next four years. So there may be some topics that are challenging for some, but we're gonna to try to really address them in a transparent and colloquial way. So really you can think of myself and my partner here as more of allies, guides, mentors, instead of just lecturers teaching you about something, more so guiding you and helping you through the process. Now, before you hand over all that trust, which thank you, by the way, you should probably know who we are and I will start. So my name is Fred Dial. I am the Assistant Director of Enrollment and Student Services here at NAU. I've been involved with NAU in some capacity since 2008, so looking at about 14 years here. I was a first-gen college student, graduated from NAU twice, and came up from Phoenix, Arizona. Joining me today. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Myrna Lord. I'm the Director of Client Services in the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid. I, too, am a proud NAU alum, I'm a first-generation college student, a native Arizonan born in Tucson, Arizona. So happy to be here this afternoon. So a little bit of what we're going to discuss, I mean, Fred mentioned the transparency and, and the open dialogue conversation that we'll be having. However, we do have a 30, about a 30 minute presentation. Um, you will have an opportunity to ask questions again by using the Q&A function at the bottom of the presentation. And as we've stated, um, we have some colleagues here from our student accounts area in the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid to assist in answering your questions. So. To give a brief overview, we will be talking about the cost of attendance or budget here at NAU. Uh, we will talk about the importance of completing the FAFSA application. Um, we'll discuss other resources that are available to students right now for the upcoming academic year. Um, and also talk about all important student worker job opportunities that we have on campus. And last but not least, uh, we will throughout the presentation give you prompts of, of opportunities to take uh, screenshots of certain slides, important slides that you might want to go back and take a look at. And, um, and we'll also give you information about how to contact us um, and when it would be a good opportunity to do that. So that's what we're going to be uh, kind of tackling today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so big picture, before we dive into more specifics about the cost of attendance, um, every student is assigned a cost of attendance budget based on their career and their residency. So most students attending right now, um, attending this um, webinar are undergraduate students. Um, that's their career. Uh, they're either incoming freshmen or transfer students. So. It, your cost of attendance will consist of two components. You have your direct costs or essential costs, as we like to refer them to refer these expenses. Um, so these are expenses that you can always expect to have and should plan and budget for. Indirect costs are expenses that are part of the overall budget but are much more individual to the person themselves. Um, in most cases, um, indirect costs, you typically won't see charges on a student account for indirect uh, for indirect costs such as transportation and personal. However, direct costs are, are the charges that you typically will see on the student's Louis account um, and, and definitely that you would need to plan and budget for. 
Here is a slide um, that would be a good opportunity here to take a screenshot. Um, here is the cost of attendance budget utilizing the direct cost. So these again are the essential costs that most likely you will see um, on a student's Louis account when we start uh, calculating these charges here pretty soon. So a big part of the essential cost is tuition. So we have here our tuition transparency for Arizona resident, um, Western undergraduate exchange, non-residents uh, tuition. The additional cost here on the right-hand side of the slide, you have your fees. Fees consist of mandatory fees and academic program fees. So mandatory fees are fees that all students will, on-campus students will pay. Um, and if you want a breakdown and a description of what these fees are, um, you you can take a look at the website, um, student account website, and they give a really good uh, breakdown of what these fees are. Also, again, tied to, to the fees component are academic programs, and this is tied to a student's program of study or major, um, and also tied to their residency. But this fee here that's listed 1846 is a good average of what an incoming freshman um, will see um, for fees. And the housing and meal plan um, that we're utilizing here is, is your typical first year um, average cost for housing and meals. And again, there are different opportunities and options out there for halls and for meal plans. So please take a look at um, our Campus Living uh, website uh, to take a look at those options. Now, book and supplies, you typically will not see book and supplies um, on a student's account, except for maybe a digital book here or there, um, and those are rare. Uh, however, books are definitely, books and supplies are definitely an expense or an item that students do need to plan and budget for. So when we talk about the FAFSA, which we are going to talk about a lot today, there's a lot of information out there, and with a lot of information comes a lot of misinformation. So I'm going to read the first part of this slide. Lots of myths you might hear regarding the FAFSA. And you may want to think to yourself, have I heard this? Have I read this? Have I read this on Facebook? Anything like that. And remember that they are, in fact, a myth. So the first is, I'm not a straight A student, so I can't get any aid. And folks, I am living proof of that being incorrect. So any questions right here? There's just not a lot of financial aid available. This last one is a personal favorite, because every time I do this presentation, someone has said it to me earlier in the day. My family's income is just too high to qualify for any aid, you know? So definitely the benefits outweigh the myths. Um, very first opportunity here is the private donor scholarship. Some private donors or, or majority of private donors um, require uh, applicate, <clears throat> excuse me, require that students have the FAFSA FAFSA on file with the institution that they're attending um, in order to just be considered or evaluate for their scholarship opportunities. Um, so you may um, be self-selecting yourself by not completing the FAFSA application because we don't know. We don't know which, which of these private donors require the FAFSA. So you definitely want to make sure you get that done just, just for consideration for these outside um, external scholarship opportunities. Uh, students will automatically qualify for a low, federally funded low interest rate student loan just by completing the FAFSA application. Eligible students will be offered um, a federally funded student loan in their name just by completing the FAFSA. You also have the opportunity for evaluation for federal and state grants and other state program initiatives that are currently in play um, here for this upcoming academic year and subsequent eight years. But the only way that we can evaluate you for these grants or free money is to have the FAFSA on file. Without the FAFSA, we don't know if you qualify for these need-based awards. And last but not least, the, the, the FAFSA or the free application for federal student aid is free, right? So they're the only cost involved is the cost of your time. On the average, this application can take about 30 to 45 minutes to complete online. In subsequent years, it's easier as the FAFSA applications are considered renewals and fields will, would self-populate with information that would not have changed and basically your family is updating um, the financial profile. So uh, again, 
private donor scholarship application, you don't want to sell, select yourself, you're automatically awarded a federally funded uh, low interest rate student loan. We cannot consider you for any federal or state grant opportunities without the FAFSA application being on file. And last but not least, you have to complete the FAFSA every year and the application is free. All right, so if you're on your computer, or actually on your cell phone too, whichever medium you've chosen today, this is a great slide to take a screenshot of. So when you talk about financial aid and really college in general here, deadlines and timelines and calendars become extremely important. So the FAFSA is gonna open up every year for the next year on October 1st. So that means the 2324 will be opening this October 1st. The priority date is April 1st, but no one panic, that's not a drop deadline. That's priority date. So should you try to get it in before April 1st? Yes, in fact, the earlier the better with FAFSA. But just because we've passed that doesn't mean it's too late to do it. You should always try to get it done even if it's past that priority date. For the academic year 22-23, which starts this fall, you're gonna use the tax year info from 2020. Now down in the bottom corner in the yellow box here, there are two things that are extremely important. The first is the school code for NAU. If you don't put the correct school code on the FAFSA, we won't get your information. We can't really do anything with information we don't have. The last one is fafsa.gov, which is the website that you should be in the FAFSA on. Keep in mind, if you are anywhere that's asking you to pay for the free application for federal student aid, you're on the wrong website. fafsa.gov should be free. That's where you should go to fill out the FAFSA each time. Thank you, Fred. So um, here is an opportunity to reach out to our office and speak with one of our uh, wonderful financial aid advisors. Uh, we understand that um, financial situations or a financial uh, family financial a family's financial profile may have changed dramatically from when the family filed their 2020 tax information as to what it actually looks like for this uh, past tax year. So um, for a reevaluation, possible reevaluation of um, the FAFSA application, uh, you do need to reach out to our office. Um, so please, uh, contact information will be given at the end of our presentation. But this is, again, an opportunity to reach out to our office and set up an appointment with one of our financial aid advisors. So the FAFSA has been filed. So now what? What type of state or federal aid can a student receive? On this slide is the formula used when offering and determining financial aid awards that will be offered to a student. So we refer, and we refer to this formula when discussing types of awards. So basically we take the cost of attendance, um, what was presented at the beginning of our presentation, but we take the entire cost of attendance with both components, the direct and indirect cost. Uh, a, found, a student will be evaluated on the entire cost of attendance. We subtract the expected family contribution amount. This is the, the information that we're getting from the FAFSA output. So basically you fill out the application, you update, you. Uh, input your family financial profile information, and then the calculation um, outputs the expected family contribution amount. So it's basic arithmetic. Um, we just subtract uh, expected family contribution from the cost of attendance. And if there's a figure in this total, um, then it's considered financial need. And this is the figure that we will use to evaluate or, or award offer a student specific types of federal and state awards. And then misnomer with the expected family contribution amount. This is not an amount that families are expected to write out a check for this year. But again, this is the amount that we are using in this formula to determine what type of, of aid a student will be offered. So we're going to proceed on with talking about three types of funding that you're going to see. The first are federally funded loans, which we'll get to. Scholarships and grants, which is free money, as we discussed before, and student employment, which is my favorite slide. I know Mirna's favorite slide. We'll probably go at pretty good length there. So when we're talking about federal student loans, you have generally three main loans through the FAFSA. You have the subsidized loan and the unsubsidized loan, which I'll kind of talk about together. Both of these loans are, uh, how do I put this, applied through, applied for by submitting the FAFSA. They both don't require repayment until after the student graduates, and they can both be accepted on your Louis account. And the Louis account is something we're gonna talk a lot about, so raise for that one. 
The subsidized loan is different because it does not accrue interest until after the student either graduates or drops below half time, while the unsubsidized loan accrues interest right away. So students, if you have a subsidized loan, if it's, let's say, $4,000, it'll stay $4,000 until after you graduate or drop below half time, while an unsubsidized loan will accrue interest right away. The Parent PLUS loan is the third loan that really we calculate through the federal government, and sometimes it can get confusing. The Parent PLUS loan is <clears throat> a loan in the student for the student's account, but it's in the name of the parent. So parents or students, if you are getting help from your parent, if you want to do the Parent PLUS loan, you need to submit a separate application in the parent's name through studentaid.gov. If you're curious about interest rates or really just loans in general, studentaid.gov is an excellent website and we do highly recommend checking it out. Now, when we talk about federal student loans, this is not including the PLUS loan, there's a limit to how much a student can get in subsidized and unsubsidized combined per year, right in front of me, 5,500, 6,500 and so on, increasing as the student goes up in class rank. Now, when we talk about loans, let's be honest, it's a tough subject for a lot of people. Student debt is on a lot of people's minds nowadays, but there are some numbers you may wanna know when we're talking about loans and funding your education. The first, and yes, this is me bragging a little bit about NAU, is that 40% of our students graduate without any debt. 40%, not one, four, four, zero. Of those that graduate with debt, it is 30 to 35% lower than the national average. And I think that's something we should be very proud of. So NAU really does their best to try to cover as much of a student's financial need as possible. Um, and here is another opportunity for you all to reach out to our office and speak with our financial aid advisors who are here to talk you through um, the process and any questions you might have about student loans and how they work. So this is a great slide um, here to take um, a picture of or a screenshot um, of for our website information. We've discussed the benefits of completing the FAFSA every year. Now, these are other funding resources um, that are currently still available. The private donor um, listing that we have on our website, these are external scholarships. Um, a community donors that we've in the past received scholarships um, awards from these donors and these particular private donors they're uh, a group of about 70 to 75 on the list and some of them are still open so are still open for um for students to submit these applications in the hopes of receiving some kind of scholarship award for the upcoming academic year. So take a look. Um, it's a, uh, again through our website and you can filter this list um, based on your, your interest um, and, and, um, and then reach out to the donor uh, through their application process. Um, we wanna highlight the Arizona Community Foundation uh, opportunity. Um, this is, um, an external donor um, and a great foundation who not only offer scholarship opportunities for Arizona residents, but also for non-residents. So again, the link is on our website. Um, so please uh, check that out. Uh, now we have mentioned here the scholarship portal. Now, right now we're really, ex we're so excited um, within the next three to six months, uh, we are going to a new scholarship platform um, that will make it easier for NAU students to apply uh, for all our scholarship opportunities, our NAU specific scholarship, um, such as the NAU Foundation, um, our general scholarship application through our office, the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid, and then departmental scholarships that are available um, for students um, from studying in, in academic areas, um, you know, example, the Frankie Colley of Business, College of Education, departments have scholarships for students who are studying in their programs. So it's all gonna be under one umbrella. Um, so look for information coming. Um, about this and this it would be we will reach out to students different communication modes but definitely through NAU email so watch out for that because you don't want to miss that opportunity to to uh, complete those scholarships for the upcoming subsequent years here so if you are a federal work study student which you'll know because it's on your account please feel free to contact the financial aid line and we can discuss that with you 
Now, when it comes to student employment, that's really a hot topic and it's a fun topic to talk about. There's this big myth out there that a lot of people think there aren't jobs on campus for students. And we are here to tell you that mm -hmm. that is wrong. All capital is underlined, highlighted, whatever you want to say. There are literally thousands of jobs on campus. And I'm, I'm an example of someone who hopped around to multiple departments in their student time. And I'll say the department I work for hires and maintains anywhere between 80 to 100 student workers at any given time. Mirna? Yes, uh, in our office and the uh, scholarships and financial aid office, we typically hire anywhere between 25 to 30 students every academic year. We like to get our students as freshmen so we can um, bring them under a fold and take care of them and teach them uh, transferable skills and networking um, here for the next four years while they're here at NAU. Um, this is a, another good slide to take a screenshot of the nau.edu forward slash handshake that is in um, cooperation with our uh, career development department. Um, and this is where all jobs are posted um, off on campus and off campus. And those on campus jobs are not just within our department. Um, there's opportunities at the rec center, um, through campus living and residence life, uh, dining services, the library facilities, many, many opportunities, at least three to 4,000 um, jobs on campus. Uh, minimum wage is being, um, in July will reach 14.50 an hour. So definitely, um, you know, a good way to earn some resources, some um, private to help cover those private indirect costs that we all will assess, right? There's going to be, um, you know, our, our toiletries, our self-care, um, our going out to dinner off campus, maybe catching a movie, um, going walking to Target or Walmart. Um, this is how you can assist covering those personal indirect costs with a part-time job on campus. So definitely check out uh, the Handshake website and we um, all departments are currently hiring on campus. So this would be a good opportunity to start that process now. Um, I want to talk also about the, the two other highlighted areas here, our budget worksheet and our finance 190. Our budget worksheet is a nifty tutorial that we have on our website on how to complete the budget worksheet. Um, we want families to utilize this tool to assist you um, and your family in determining any possible charges due after scholarships and financial aid have paid. Um, just keep in mind that the scholarship worksheet does use annual cost figures and awards. Um, and I want to take this opportunity right now to play the tutorial for you to just show you how easy it is um, to walk you through this process. So I'm going to take that right now and we're gonna play it. It's about four minutes long. Welcome Lumberjacks. My name is Brant Zemba from the Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid. And today I'm gonna to be going over the instructions for our budget worksheet for the 2022-2023 academic year. The Office of Scholarships and Financial Aid developed a budget worksheet tool for students and families to complete in order to fully understand the potential of out-of-pocket expenses associated with attending NAU. There are three spreadsheets on the website that are broken up by your residency. Arizona In-State Resident, Western Undergraduate Exchange, also known as WUI, and Non-Resident. Please select your residency, and before you begin, make sure that you have access to your Louie account or your offer letter to calculate in your financial aid awards. Today, I will be going over an Arizona Resident worksheet as an example. This worksheet will encompass the entire academic year. Half of these estimated costs would be for fall, and half would be for spring. Now that you have selected your residency, there are some fields you will see in this budget worksheet that are auto-populated for you, such as tuition, mandatory fees, and academic fees. Mandatory fees are fees that each student enrolled at NAU are required to pay. A breakdown of these fees may be found on the Student and Departmental Account Services website at nau.edu sdas. Now what are academic fees? Each college that you are studying in, like the Frankie College of Business or College of Education, assesses a flat fee for students that are enrolled in their programs. Be sure to check with your college for those specific rates. Below these already populated fields is where you will input your potential charges for the upcoming year and your financial aid and scholarship awards. You will be responsible to fill out the colored sections of the form, red and blue for your housing and meal plan, and then yellow for all of your additional expenses and your financial aid awards and scholarships. 
You may have already selected your freshman dorm and meal plan for the upcoming year. Those figures may be found on the worksheet so that you will input it once those figures have been chosen. For this example, I'm going to be going living in Allen Hall, a traditional shared bedroom, and have 14 meals per week. As you are entering these figures, you will see that this worksheet is totaling up your costs. This will show you the total costs that will be charged through your NAU Louie account, your tuition, fees, housing, and meal plan. Next, we move into your estimated costs that are not charged through your Louie account, but are budgeted into a student's cost of attendance each year. You will see books and supplies, personal and transportation costs listed. You are able to go with the NAU budgeted amounts or input your own amounts. Transportation and personal expenses may be cost accrued throughout the year for maybe a vehicle you bring on campus or just personal expenses that you will incur while being a college student. For this example, I will go with the NAU budgeted $900 for books and supplies, I will go with $500 for transportation, and $1,000 for personal expenses. Adding the total charges through your Louis account with your estimated charges outside of Louis will give you your estimated cost of attendance for the academic year. Next, you are going to plug in your financial aid amounts that you have listed in your Louis account. Your Louis account will have a live up-to-date of your ward amounts from such as your tuition scholarships and other grants. You may have been offered loans which require you to accept those offered amounts. Plus loans require an additional application that must be improved in order to receive the amount listed in your Louis account. Today I'm going to go with a $6,000 scholarship as well as $3,000 in additional grants. I will also go with 3,500, which is the maximum for a subsidized loan for freshman dependent students, as well as the maximum for unsubsidized loan of $2,000. As you can see, after all the values in inputted, you are given a total remaining cost for the whole year. This may be a living document, so please refer back to as additional scholarships are added or other resources are applied. For any additional information that you might need, please head over to our incoming student financial aid page that I have shown here. This will have more information regarding completing your FAFSA, understanding your offer letter, and scholarship information. Our team is available Monday through Thursday over the summer, and then Monday through Friday throughout the year to answer any of your additional questions. Please email us at financial.aid at nau.edu or give us a call at 928-523-4951. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, taking a look and hanging in there with our budget worksheet tutorial. Very easy peasy. Um, and here again is another opportunity once you have completed and walked through the budget uh, worksheet and any awards that you have up to this point or offers, um, please feel free to contact our department and we'd be happy to set up an appointment with one of our academic advisors to go over the worksheet um, step by step with you. Last but not least, Finance FIN 190 or Personal Finance in a Global Economy. This is a wonderful course that is offered through the Frankie College of Business. However, um, no, uh, you do not have to be in a business major in order to be able to take this course. Uh, Professor Kevin Aguas and team teach this course um, every semester, both online and in person. Um, and it is a great course in, to help prepare us for um, the next uh, for years of college um, expenses and also uh, take into um, account um, some interesting information in regards to they, they build one of their projects is to build a $3 million retirement fund. Um, Dr. Uh, Professor Aguas also discusses in detail student loan debt in, um, in comparison with what your, your dream job may be and what career field that you may be going with, uh, going into and, and maybe um, budgeting uh, using that knowledge of what, um, you know, how much income you're going to be, salary you're going to be drawing as to whether or not these um, student loan, um, the, the ease of making these student loan payments. So definitely, of course, um, it, there's uh, sections available for fall, but definitely something that you may want to think about um, taking in your sophomore year. So you've completed the FAFSA application, you've applied for tons of scholarships, um, the stars have aligned, <laughs> you've received lots of awards. So now how will your charges get paid? So if we take a look here at the center slide, these um, 
uh, mouse ear uh, diagram here. This is uh, how awards will be applied onto your student Louie account. And remember the awards, um, the awards are applied for the academic year um, in many, but, but uh, charges are posted per semester. So you'll get half in the fall, half in the spring for awards and charges will calculate for the fall and then we'll calculate for the spring later in the fall semester. So scholarships here, what types, what type of awards are considered scholarships? This is where you would consider in the Lumberjack Award, um, all tuition waivers such as the Lumberjack President Deans with Distinction, your Blue and Gold Awards, um, any national merit, any private donor scholarships that you've applied for and know that you're going to receive, they will be, they will sit out here on your financial aid award page um, as scholarships. The grants and loans, this is the information um, that we would get from the FAFSA application. So the grants, um, the federal federal and state grants would set out here for the for the academic year. And then loans. Now this is once you work through the budget worksheet and maybe you're going to take a Bit one of your loans, maybe not all, a partial loan, or maybe your parents' um, supporters are going to apply um, for a Parent PLUS loan and um, to help assist co co covering those educational costs. So this will all sit out there for the fall semester. Um, aid will disperse on or about 10 days prior to the beginning of the fall semester. So once aid disperses, um, how are those how how is that aid applied? So students, the, let me say this because it can be a little confusing. Charges are going to be paid in due date order first. So the oldest charge or whatever's due first actually is going to get paid first. Now, if charges have the same due date, let's say with housing and meals, it's going to pay in this order that I'm going to explain. Tuition and fees take priority. Then if anything's left over, it moves to housing. Anything after that moves to meal plans and then any other charges after that. Now, if you have an excess of aid, you may qualify for a refund, but put a pin in that because I know that's exciting, but we'll get to that a little later. Now, one of the first questions we always get asked is, is there a payment plan? The answer is yes, kind of, but kind of in a good way. So there's a tuition payment plan. And the reason it's a tuition payment plan is because housing and meals are automatically broken up into monthly payments. The tuition payment plan has a couple nice bonuses that we do want to go over. The first is that there it allows for predictable monthly payments throughout the term. Next is it is a one-time low enrollment fee. So it's $75 to enroll for the term. There is no reoccurring service charge throughout the term. There is no interest accrued. Once you pay the enrollment fee, you're in the payment plan. The due dates will line up with housing and meal plan installments. So you don't have multiple due dates floating out there. And hey, you can do all of this through your Louis Center, Student Sir, Louis Student Service Center. Um, Louis itself is definitely a hot button. Um, I do call it the, and like the gateway for the NEU student experience and other random things that come up with. But in all seriousness, Louis is a great tool and probably one you want to lean on through your time here at NEU. Now, this is what the payment plan would look like. Let's call this student Alex. And let's say Alex has $4,500 left of their tuition. Alex really has three options at this point. Alex can self-enroll for $75 and break up that tuition remainder into three monthly installments. Alex could pay the entire thing out of pocket, which is good for Alex. Or if Alex does not self-enroll or pay the tuition entirely, Alex will be automatically enrolled into the payment plan for $150. So quick review. One, they could pay, Alex could pay, or sorry, Alex could self-enroll into the payment plan for $75. Two, Alex could pay the tuition remainder entirely. Or three, if neither of those options are taken, Alex will be automatically enrolled after a certain date for $150. All right, so I mentioned before um, that aid will disperse on or about uh, 10 days prior to the beginning of the semester. Now, these are important dates. Here's a good slide to take a screenshot of. Here are the uh, dates that you can start expecting starting less than a month from now. Tuition and fees will start posting on or about the first week um, in July, and then e-bills will, um, will start sending those out um, the week of July 25th. And then of course, financial aid will disperse and, 
and on the 21st of August and tuition and fees are due on the 22nd. So um, here is again, a good slide to take a, a screenshot of. Um, and then most important, um, we will send um, NAU reminders again to the NAU email. Um, if, if you are um, at that point in the processing or payment tuition payment due date and um, we will let you know if you're eligible to be um, auto enrolled in the tuition payment plan um, and then charge the higher fee. So definitely keep an eye out for your emails that we will be sending you. All right, so um, we mentioned Louie throughout our chat, um, you know, the importance of checking your Louie account and all the information and items that you're able to take care of by logging into your Louie. Um, as uh, Fred has called it the gateway or lifeline to your NA experience, I tend to regard it as, you know, the end all be all in regards to your academic and financial information. So it's always good to get accustomed to checking your NAU emails and definitely checking um, your, your holes and to-do list task. So I want to concentrate, this is a view of what a student's um, uh, view of what this looks like for a student's perspective um, when they log into their Louis student portal. Um, again, this is a mobile friendly um, uh, application and could also be seen through a student's mobile device. So I want to concentrate on these three major tiles here, the task, the financial aid, and the financial account tiles. So the task tile is your to-do and your holds list. So students, again, want to get accustomed to checking this on a regular basis. Um, to-dos and holds can prevent, in some instances, from, stu from students being able to enroll in classes, from students being able to have their financial aid award or offered. And in some cases, um, a hold can prevent a student's aid from dispersing. So it's a big deal. So you definitely want to, uh, uh, don't want to delay anything um, when aid is finally able to disperse. So definitely check your to-do and your holds list on a regular basis. Your financial aid tile here, this is our financial aid. So when our tile, as I like to say, um, our scholarship tile. So when we award and offer financial aid, this is where we will direct you to whenever there's a change in awards, either we're adding award or whatever, de decreasing based on what we're getting um, in awards here. Uh, we will send an email notification again to your NAU email account that has change has occurred and to go check out your financial aid tile and this is where you would go. Um, previously, um, Fred had mentioned that you can accept, students can accept their student loans through their LUI. This is where you would go. This is, uh, this financial aid tile is where you would log in and uh, uh, accept your student loans from this tile. And last but not least, financial account. This is our, our partners in the student accounts area. Um, and this is where um, charges are posted. I, I tend to call it the bank of the university, right? The bursar. So if you log into your Louis account, aid will disperse. You know it's going to disperse in August. You can log into your Louis account, go to your financial account the very next day, and you can see if there's any balance due or any charges that are due, uh, future due, um, based once aid has dispersed. So this is where you go. And there's other things that can be taken care of. And Fred is going to kind of highlight those in his, um, in some future slides. So. So the future is now. If you plan to make a <laughs> payment on your Louis account, here are the options that you may consider. Online, of course, the Louis account is the first option. And it's the option we definitely recommend. Um, it's faster, it's more secure, but there are a couple of things you may want to know about. The credit card is the uh, second option up here, and it's really important to know that if you pay with a credit card, you will be charged a 2.85% service fee based on the payment. So if it's $100, you're looking at about $2.85 extra. If you're paying a couple thousand or more like that, you're going to start feeling that fee a lot faster. The other option is an e-check. Now, an e-check is where you take your account and routing number usually from a check, this is the way I do it, and you input that into the system, the Louis system. Now, what that'll do is it'll act as a debit um, transaction for the account, and there is no service charge. So quick summary, credit card will have a credit card service fee. The e-check will have no service fee. If you wanna pay by mail, 
and you plan to send us a check, please, please, please include your student's ID number on said check. Um, John Smith may be very important to you. You may have known him all his life, but there's a lot of John Smiths in the world. And there's a lot of John Smiths at NAU. In fact, student accounts will hold a check unless we're 100% sure whose account it goes to. If you do plan to send checks to NAU, NAU student accounts is the office you want to go with. This sounds like a joke, but please don't send us currency or coinage. That really ends up getting messy a lot of times. Check is preferred if you plan to mail. Hey, if you plan to pay in person, though, cash is an option at over at Gamage Student Account Office. And you can always pay with check, money order, cashier's check at the service center or Gamage as well. Now, direct deposits, and hey, back to the refunds word. Um, there's a lot of options to get refunds. Well, really, there's two. I don't know. I said a lot there for a second. There's two, and I'm going to heavily favor direct deposit for many reasons. The first is that it's faster. It's about a third of the time to get a paper check. It's more secure. And honestly, there's a lot less room for human error. Um, with paper check, you are based on the address on file. And I can personally say that can go sideways very quickly. Because when I was a sophomore, I input the wrong address and chased a large check that I needed to pay rent throughout the state of Arizona. Direct deposit can be done, you guessed it, on your Louis account. Now, I, when we do this in person, I usually have the parents and family raise their hands in the room. So if you want to feel included, feel free to raise your hand if you are a parent or family member helping out a student. If students, if you have someone like that who's going to be helping out with your account, you may want to consider making them an authorized payer, formerly known as authorized user. Authorized payers can view account balances, they can receive e-bills, and importantly, they can make payments on an account. Instructions to do so can be found at nau.edu forward slash the DAS. Now that's very different from the FERPA release. The FERPA stands for the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. And what that states, students, is once you begin classes, unless I have a FERPA release with someone's name on it, I cannot speak about your account to anyone that you haven't told me I can. You can write me, Mirna letters, you can send us whatever you want to, a carrier pigeon, which would be very impressive. But unless we have that FERPA release, we're not going to be talking about that account. And that's not a Fred Mirna thing. That is across campus. So students, if you have someone in your life, mom, dad, sister, brother, whatever, who is helping you out, maybe making a few phone calls from you, gathering information, and let's say you're in bio labs from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you may want to consider having them on the FERPA release. Now, you might think, wow, the FERPA release, that's really important and really protective. It must take a lot of time and effort. And that's wrong. Uh, FERPA release takes about five to 10 minutes and you can do it online. So students, I do encourage you, if you have anyone who's helping you out, please put them on the FERPA release. And a random funny fact, I actually just saw this day. My mother is still my FERPA release from 2008. So if I can do it, you can do it too. are at the end of our presentation. Here is, as promised, our contact information for all three of our offices, um, scholarships and financial aid, uh, the service center, and our friends and colleagues in student accounts. Uh, so if you need assistance with answering questions about the FAFSA application or the possibility of having a reevaluation of the FAFSA information or have questions about your financial account and what charges appear again as your guides and allies in this discussion, um, give us a call, contact us. We are here to answer your questions um, and again, guide you um, in, in making sure that uh, the next um, four years are easy and stress-free and a wonderful overall experience for you all. So again, um, we are going to now take some questions, right? I believe. Yes. Um, yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Emily Schlittenhart. I serve as the Director in Enrollment and Student Services. And there are some questions here that we're going to answer live. Um, and then again, we have our contact information here. So if you want to reach out independently, um, we can also take any questions throughout the week um, use the, using these contact uh, information here. So the first question is, um, where will this presentation be housed after or can you share a link to these presentations? So yes, we will have these um, uploaded to our NAU YouTube channels. You can get to those YouTubes by going to nau.edu forward slash welcome. Um, again, nau.edu slash welcome. It's also in the chat. If you scroll down to the bottom of that web page, all of our YouTubes will be listed there and we will have this presentation uploaded um, in the next couple of days to that YouTube 
channel. We also have a lot of different videos posted there and a lot of different resources. So please check out those YouTubes over the summer for the most current and up-to-date information. Okay, great. So I answered that question. Um, so here's another question um, for, let's see here, Fred about the payment plan. So Fred, the payment plan, when can I enroll? And can an overpayment be made above what's due um, before I enroll in the payment plan? So the payment plan won't be available to you until after you have charges on your account. That's the first and most important thing. Once those are out there, that's a little more open. However, we always recommend you wait for financial aid to disperse. You're not really sure what you're looking at until everything's been applied to your account. So as Mirna said, 10 days before the fall semester begins, financial aid roughly around there should be dispersing. I would wait until that happens. Now, as far as an overpayment goes, you can't have a negative balance on your account because that will refund to you. You can, however, pay more than what is due each month. So let's say you have $10,000 due overall and only 1,000 is due this month. You can pay more than $1,000, but you can't ever pay more than the total balance on your account. Great, thank you. And then either um, one of you want to answer a little bit about student jobs. So when st should a student start applying for jobs, looking at jobs, um, and can students apply for jobs even if they're not federal work study eligible? Okay, I'll, I'll take that one. I'll start with that one. Um, yes, most definitely students can apply for jobs. Um, whether or not they're federal work study eligible, the nau.edu forward slash handshake, that is where all jobs live and they are um, openings on and off campus live, but definitely the on-campus ones. And uh, opportunities are available now. So if you know um, what your schedule is, if you have already enrolled in, and been enrolled in classes and you kind of can figure out what your, your availability will be, um, you can start applying for those jobs now. Great. Thanks, Mirna. Um, so there's a question in here about residency. So I can give you the contact information, mm -hmm. um, you know, about changing your residency from resident to non-resident or having that conversation because that does affect your scholarship mm -hmm. eligibility. That's the question here. So please um, call us. Fred's going to put that contact information in the chat. Um, but yes, we can talk. Uh, if you have questions around residency, you can call us at our residency office and we can talk to you about that because that does change your scholarship eligibility. Yes. And then I think um, that kind of wraps up the questions. Uh, there's one more question. Um, so one last question for Mirna. Will the types of loans auto generate based on need? Meaning, will we be able to see how much we are given in grants so we can apply or ask for enough for the year? So kind of thinking about, I guess, um, how much mm -hmm. they want to accept in those loans. Yes, how should they absolutely. kind of navigate that? Yes. So remember with um, when we are evaluating for types of awards, we're taking that calculation where we subtract the expected family contribution amount from the cost, the overall cost of attendance. And if there's a balance or a figure in that calculation, then that's what a student and can be evaluated for um, need-based awards. So uh, with student loans, remember that as an incoming dependent freshman, the maximum amount that a student can receive in a student loan for the academic year is 5,500. So, and the maximum of the 5,500 that a student can receive in a subsidized loan is 3,500. So that amount would be split, split, split equally between the two semesters. So when we evaluate you for awards, we're looking at the overall picture and that's when the determination is made whether or not you're eligible for any federal or state aid and what the maximum um, subsidized loan eligibility you would be able to get offered. So, um, I think that covers it, right, Emily, pretty much? Yes, that yes. covers okay. the question. And then, of course, you, utilizing the budget worksheet, um, that tutorial and, and um, the worksheet to try to, again, it's a live document, as we've said, 
Um, so it is something that you can update as you know, as you become aware of any awards or scholarships that you've been offered once the initial financial aid has been awarded to you. Great. Well, that concludes all of the questions that we had um, to answer live. So thank you all again for attending our presentation. Our contact information, please take a screenshot. Definitely reach out over the summer um, with any questions that you have, because we definitely want you coming in to the fall feeling confident um, and ready to start. So please feel free to reach out with any questions that you have. But again, thank you all so much and have a great evening.